Good morning. You are watching The Dietitian on a Mission. My name is Janet Calderwood, and thank you for tuning in today. You know, this show is dedicated to our viewers. For people watching this show, I want to make sure that you are getting the most accurate, up-to-date health information available through TV and through YouTube and whatever uh, source of media that you watch this show. Again, I have a wonderful registered dietitian in the house with me today, Jennifer Vargo, not only a personal friend, but a wonderful, great uh, nutrition educator. And she is here today, and we're going to play a fun game with her. I told her a little bit about it, but I'm going to throw her some curveballs. <laughs> and it's called the healthy versus unhealthy food choice. Is it healthy or is it unhealthy? And I think that people make some real uh, decisions about food mm -hmm. based on what they're heard. You know, social media, right. people post different things. Oh, you shouldn't be eating that. That's mm -hmm. bad for you. This is good for you. Mm -hmm. You need to do this. I lost 20 pounds in two days by doing this. Well, these are some things that Jennifer is going to help us uncover today. Is it really healthy for us or is it something that may be deleterious to your health and maybe you should give it second thought? Not to mention, some of these uh, things that we're going to discuss today are very expensive, mm. and consumers, it leaves them frustrated and discouraged when the end result is just more disappointment. So, I am very glad to have you back here. Thank How's you. the family? Very good, thank you. Good. The family <laughs> is, uh, the, the oldest now is seven, and uh, I remember when he was just a baby. I know. Time goes by so fast. So spend time with your children, you That's know, because right. time does go by fast. I know my daughter now is 25, and oh I don't gosh. know. I'm only 26, <laughs> so I mean, I don't know how that happened, but Miracle. gosh, time, time does go by really, really quickly. Oh. All right, so the unhealthy versus healthy, healthy versus unhealthy game. Right. The first thing I want to ask you is about salt, right? Okay. Because when we think about salt, people mm -hmm. say nowadays a big marketing ploy is, oh, this is made with natural sea salt. Right. And is that a healthy or an unhealthy food item, Jennifer? <laughs> and give me your uh, input on that. Okay. So, un unfortunately, it's going to be, I I'm going to say an unhealthy purely because salt is salt. It's just, it's just a matter of sea salt is a bigger granule than our table salt. Mm -hmm. We're still getting salt. So if we're, if we're already having to watch our sodium in our diet, mm -hmm. going from, well, I'm not using table salt anymore. I'm using sea salt instead. There's really so, no difference so there. So what it's you're saying lateral. is that just because it comes from the sea, sea or land or air, yeah, I mean, I don't know right. if they have salt in the air, but it's still. Yeah, it's still salt. Salt is salt. And it's why salt. is salt such a big deal anyway? Yeah. Well, and I, I think it goes back to the cardiovascular again, too. I, you know, unfortunately, some of us struggle with hypertension or high blood pressure. So we know that there there is a correlation there with sodium increasing blood you pressure know, increasing the blood pressure and the so more that's why. sodium that somebody eats normally in the form of table salt yes. right um, can certainly cause your blood pressure to escalate that's right mm -hmm. that's right and also be mindful that you know for people that say you know what Janet I'm healthy I don't even use salt good right. for you and right. I'm proud of you but my question is this just to be a little bit trickier right. do you think that just because um, you're eating without using the salt shaker that your food doesn't have any in any sodium in it because if people are eating oh. processed foods right yes. they say well I never used a salt shaker right well, if they even eat things like bread and milk right right there's sodium in it so I'm just using Absolutely. that that's just a sidebar there but Absolutely. you know remember that salt by itself is not uh, you know, we're not sitting here saying to you, never eat it, but I just want you to be aware that whether it comes from the sea, mm -hmm. land, whatever the case is, mm -hmm. that sea salt is not a healthier choice. Right. There may be trace minerals added, mm -hmm. but it's insignificant. Right. So not enough to warrant increasing it in your diet. Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> no, please. And, you know, and, and if anything, just, you know, 
be mindful that it could contribute to uh, greater risk factors for cardiovascular health. So right. the first one we're going to say is, you know, unhealthy, I right. would say, right? Right, right? Don't be afraid to say I that. Know. That's unhealthy. Oh. Okay, so salt we know is unhealthy. <laughs> um, now, I have on the table just a couple of things. I just picked up a couple things at the store. Mm -hmm. But let's talk for a minute now about sugar and okay. natural sugars, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so people, we've heard, you know, a lot of people that shop at maybe some specialty grocery stores sure. have food products that have this demerara sugar mm -hmm. and even honey. Right. Right? So my question to you, Jennifer Vargo, is are those healthy or unhealthy food items? And I feel like it's a catch-22. It is a catch-22. Because sugar is sugar. we got to start there. So we're not, it's not lower in calories just because it's a different form of sweetener. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, especially when we're talking about honey, it's more concentrated. So like a... I think it's 60 calories in honey and 45 in sugar. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that shows something. But do people really get any added benefit from these natural, what they like to refer to? It's all natural. Right, right. Are there any added benefits? If anything, the one thing that I could find mm -hmm. is that, I think this is true about all foods, you can say this, is that the less processed it is, the less we fiddle with it or the food industry fiddles with it, I think the better off it is for us. Mm -hmm. So the closest we get it to the original origin of food, the better off it is. Okay. So I will say that. Okay. But if a food is organic, does it make it healthier for us? Well... That's a good question. I'm supposed to be asking the questions, not you. <laughs> Sorry. But that's okay. So, okay, let's just bring mm -hmm. that up because that's like the elephant in the room mm -hmm. and people have some very strong feelings about this term organic. So I think first we need to identify what does that in fact really mean? Mm -hmm. So organic foods are foods that are processed without pesticides, mm -hmm or antibiotics, mm -hmm. right? The purpose of an organic food is to reduce the carbon footprint on the earth. That means looking for ways to minimize the damage done to the earth. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at an organic carrot compared to a conventionally grown carrot, mm -hmm. at least what we know from the USDA and other researchers is that it is almost nutritionally equivalent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The organic food item may be a greater cost to the consumer. I usually refer to this as a consumer's choice. Right. I would be very yeah. happy if people would just eat more carrots, right. whether they're organic which, like I said, mm -hmm. I mean, it may not be cost effective for people, especially people that are on very limited food budgets. Yeah. If they could get something that was not or I don't eat organic carrots, mm -hmm. quite frankly. I just eat carrots, and um, you know, and I'm 50 years old, and I feel like this. It's a personal choice. If mm -hmm. somebody feels that, you know, they have some concerns, maybe they have some, you know, we don't know the long-term benefits mm -hmm. of eating organic foods because we know the nutritional profile is the same, but there's no pesticides, there's no commercial fertilizers mm -hmm. that are, you know, chemical fertilizers, and certainly the fact that there's no antibiotics, that means something to people. Absolutely, and I think too that we are all individuals mm -hmm. and for some of us our needs are going to be different mm -hmm. and perhaps for some people their sensitivities exactly. are different than others which for those people they may have to seek out organic mm -hmm. because of the sensitivities that they may have and i say this you know if it's right for you it doesn't mean it's right for everybody right. else and um if it's wrong for you it doesn't mean it's wrong for everybody else so you know if you enjoy eating organic foods or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, let's just be careful that people make individual choices and, you know, that we'll leave it at that. I right. will say this, that 
an organic chocolate chip cookie, and people that watch this show have heard this before. An organic chocolate chip cookie still has just as much fat and sugar as a, in calories as a regular cookie. Right. And you'd be surprised. There is some very uh, parallel research that shows that people that typically buy organic foods mm -hmm. or people that even shop with those reusable shopping mm -hmm. bags. Mm -hmm are the ones that can go off the deep end and say, oh, well, I bought all this stuff. Now I can feel better about myself and yeah. get this unhealthy food item. Right. It really is true. I mean, yeah. that's what the science shows us. So yeah. I say to people, you know, hey, do the best you can. Anytime you can eat more fruits and vegetables, right. which is always a healthy framework of a, a good, healthy diet, mm -hmm. It's a good, a good thing. Right, definitely. Yeah, the, the one point I would make, too, is that just like what you're saying, it, it, sometimes what happens is it's almost like we get a halo effect yeah. when we see that something's organic or all natural. It, it kind of gives us a green light. Me. Oh, yeah, this is, this is absolutely. A funny, quick story is I had a friend. She was a dietitian, and she had a patient that came to see her. He was morbidly obese, okay, he was 100 pounds overweight, and he came to see the dietitian. and the first thing he tells her, I only eat organic food. Uh, and she said to him, well, you've gained 100 pounds eating too much food, whether it's organic or not. Right. Listen, just be aware mm -hmm. that I just want you to understand you know, have all the information so that you can make choices that are most important to your uh, your personal choices mm -hmm. and your overall health. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so this particular guy that was shopping at a name brand organic store mm -hmm. uh, gained just as much weight as somebody that was eating non-organic foods. Right. And I throw that out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll Good leave point. that at that. Uh, don't get mad at me. Don't send me any hate mail or anything <laughs> like that. But, you know, again, mm -hmm. I feel like it is my job to share the information as I know it best and accurately with you. And then you can make your own choices. You can say, well, you know, I don't agree with that or whatever. That's your choice. And um, But I still hope we can be friends, okay? Um, don't defriend me on Facebook or anything like that. No, but really, this show is for you and and uh, for your information. All right. Now, you okay. we were talking about sugar mm -hmm. yes. is what we're talking yes. about. And I want to get back to that a minute yeah. because, um, you know, you've heard people vilify sugar. Oh, gosh, you know, that's poison. Right. And I want to be perfectly clear here that it's not one food that does people in. Is that right? Right, right. that's right. And and that's that's where even this topic is a little tricky, too, isn't it? Healthy and unhealthy. I did that on you know? purpose. <laughs> so it makes it tricky because, in a sense, we don't really want to treat foods that way. No, we don't. It would be nice to make them neutral. Make foods neutral because what happens is if you set food up, oh, that's a bad food. You shouldn't be eating that. What happens when you eat it? Gosh, I, I, I hear this all the time. I cheated on my diet. Right. Why? Because you ate a piece of chocolate? Right. I mean, come on. I mean, so what, let's talk about the 80-20 rule. Right, yeah, that's a great rule to have. Um, this, this rule is one in, in which, you know, what's considered a healthy diet? And there's a concept of this 80-20 rule where 80% of the times you're choosing foods that are healthy and nutritious and nourishing to your body. Mm -hmm. The other 20% of the time you're choosing foods that you're enjoying without guilt or shame. So mm -hmm. purely for the joy of it. Yes, purely for the joy of it. So we want to focus on whole grains and low-fat dairy mm -hmm. and, and lean meats and legumes and then, you know, some of those healthier fats like that come from avocados and nuts and things like that, mm -hmm. salmon and so forth. Did I forget anything? No, those Fruits are Fruits and vegetables, of <laughs> course. Um, and then, you know, you know, making some of those maybe foods that don't provide a whole lot of nutrition mm -hmm. to uh, your diet, like candies and things like that, um, as an occasional food. Right. Like, we don't want you to go to a birthday cake and think that you have to have, you know, a piece of fruit 
as your birthday right. substitute. I mean, you came to my birthday party. I did. Did I have cake? Yeah. Did I eat it? <laughs> yeah. I had my cake and I <laughs> ate it too. And it was delicious. But I don't do that all the time. Right. And we can't do all that That's time. It. If people eat everything they want to eat whenever they want to eat it in unlimited quantities, mm -hmm. they cannot weigh what they want to weigh. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so I say that. So, you know, a lot of these decisions and choices is really in your ballpark here. And, um, you know, use your discretion, what's important to you. Mm -hmm. Maybe, um, you know, I'll give an example for myself. I like to, when I do use that 80-20 rule, mm -hmm. occasionally I will chew something like vanilla ice cream as one of those food items for me. Mm -hmm. And as you know, that a serving of ice cream, the premium ice creams have up to 250 calories per half cup serving. But the uh, natural ice cream that I choose is 130 calories for half a cup serving. But, you know, again, so I was able to make that choice, yeah. but I still ate the ice cream. You see? <laughs> and I didn't beat myself up. I said, right. oh gosh, you know, you're going to go to hell in a handbag if you ate that. <laughs> and I think the thing to think about, too, is that when you do allow yourself that 20% rule, mm -hmm. enjoy it. Enjoy and it. don't do it secretively. Sometimes we hurry up and we go around the corner and show yeah. another room and you hurry up and eat it. Uh -huh. But then what joy did you get out of it? It seems secretive. It seems guilty. It's a moral thing. Yeah. Sit down and enjoy it. Well, and at least one time when I was eating ice cream, I was actually on my recumbent bike. <laughs> and I was sitting there with butter pecan ice cream <laughs> and I was riding my bike. And I was balancing okay. my calories yeah. with my activity. Calorie in, calorie out. And so my daughter thought it would be a great time to take a picture sure. and share it with the world. <laughs> Look at my mom, you know. But the thing is, again, remember, it's not about you can't, you know, food is neutral. Right. And if you were eating out of being really hungry and you're not standing in the refrigerator right. like secret eating and right. all that, I mean, I was... I was mount, I I rode my exercise bike 20 miles that day. So anyway, <laughs> all right. So we throw that out there. What about these veggie straws? I put these on the table because you know people again, mm -hmm. veggie. Mm -hmm. Is that like a serving of vegetables if you mm -hmm. eat those? <laughs> again, it goes back to me where I think the closer we get it to the origin of that food, the better off it's going to be for us. Mm -hmm. And this is so far removed from its origin <laughs> that the fact that it even has veggie on the package is almost an insult to our intelligence. Yeah. Um, if yeah. people turned that over and looked at the ingredient label, yeah. it would just be just, yeah. really, there's like eight lines of all these right. words that cannot be pronounced. So yeah. I, you know, that's really the key, right? Looking at the, and it quite is. frankly, these veggie straws that I put up here, I put these up here for a reason. Number one, not only do they have more sodium than regular potato chips, and by the way, a potato is a vegetable, mm -hmm. so that really should be called, you see what I'm saying? Right. So. Um, and the calories between these veggie straws and mm -hmm. potato chips is mm -hmm. about equal. Mm -hmm. So what are you gaining? What's the point? Yeah, that? what's the point? And these are more mm -hmm. expensive usually. Yeah. I mean, it just depends. I mean, you've got yeah. to compare the cost and everything. Right. But that was kind of a trick question. So uh, remember, it's not a pl replacement for a serving of vegetable. Right. I mean, even though they have different colors that are most <laughs> reflective of vegetable colors, mm -hmm. like they have... It almost looked like a beta carotene right. veggie straw, right? Mm -hmm. But you mm -hmm. could eat a carrot or whatever. So I just, I threw that on there. That was kind of a trick one. Um, mm -hmm. Now, here's a tough one I want to okay. bring up. This isn't really a question about food, but something that's very popular. Okay. <coughs> we hear this term, detox. You need to detox. You need this. This is healthy for you. Right, right. And this gets really <coughs> dangerous to, a, to an extent because people are doing these detoxes. They usually do them over a short period of time, like maybe over the course of like three days, what maybe five days. What does that mean, days. detox? So when, when people are talking about doing a detox, um, Ridding their body Ridding of their all body these of toxins harmful and things chemicals that, could be, that build yeah. up, right? Yeah, and and these harmful chemicals that could be building up in our body, 
could be related to our own lifestyle too. If we're a smoker, if we're a drinker, if we're eating a lot of packaged items like veggie straws. <laughs> but, you said it. <laughs> um, so, you know, potentially there could be these toxins in the body. Maybe it's affecting the way that the body is working, you know. And so therefore mm -hmm. people feel that they need to detox from them. Mm -hmm. But the body is such a miracle in and of itself that when we do nourish the body the way that we should. Like eating the correct food. Eating the correct the foods, the fruits, rule. the vegetables, the whole grains, the lean meats, the, the low, fat, the low dairy. fat dairy. When we're doing this in good hydration and good fiber, mm -hmm. the body should be working at its pinnacle. Okay. But if we're not doing that, the body may not work as effectively. Mm -hmm. So this is where people think, well, you, get, you need to detox in order for you yeah. to be able to work that way. And so therefore, often what these detoxes are, they could be you know, less than 500 calories and maybe like huge yeah, amounts of water, dangerous. laxatives. They can be very, very dangerous, where people end up in the hospital sometimes. And some of these of detox um, regimens are very expensive. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. they are. They are. Like juicing, like I know I saw one, uh, like, what, maybe $300, $400 to be able to do it over a three-day period to be able to detox. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of times people will do it in, in the, the vein to lose weight, mm -hmm. and they do lose weight. Temporarily. Temporarily because of this huge water loss, water loss that they're Fluid experiencing. Mm -hmm. So, and then as soon as the detox is over, that when they go gonna back come right to back. replenishing their body, mm -hmm. then um, so does the weight. The weight returns. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like I, I, I work closely with a dietitian that she's um, getting into functional nutrition, functional medicine, and they get into a, a detox food plan. And that process is not a weekend affair. It's, it's a lengthy process. It's, it's going to take time for the body to get back to working the way that it had mm -hmm. through, again, good nutrition, as we mm -hmm. were just talking about. Mm -hmm. It's not a quick fix. It's no. a lengthy process in order to get the body back to where it needs to be in order to detox. I like your point about, you know, really, um, when you talked about <clears throat> really being mindful that, you know, the more ingredients and mm -hmm. things that have in the food, um, every time I think about uh, food manufacturing and things like this, that people are buying, they're compelled to buy things mm -hmm. based on their taste buds. Right. And we really can't just go by that because I, I usually refer to this term as hyper palatability ah. and that means that if something doesn't taste very good mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. people are not generally going to spend their hard-earned money paying for something right. like that well i don't like vegetables they don't taste good right they're not rewarding i'd rather have veggie straws okay right. well there are ways that people can certainly uh, flavor and season their vegetables mm -hmm. and we will have you know, some upcoming shows about strategies to help with that. But again, any opportunity that someone has to do the right thing mm -hmm. makes it easier the next time. How difficult was it to get your children to eat vegetables? I think it's also a matter of um, setting the example. Setting the example in repetition? Right, right. So we always eat as a family. We always eat at the table together. I'm not a short order cook. So what I'm serving is what we're eating. <laughs> I like that. I'm not a short of order cook either. <laughs> so that's part of it. You you set the example. You set the tone. So I think that that helps out a lot. I, bl granted, I'm very blessed. I've got I've got two boys that are just they're fantastic and they're they're very good eaters. So I mm -hmm. am very blessed and they're very adaptive. Did you like rub your tummy when you were pregnant? Say, eat your vegetables. <laughs> eat your vegetables when you get older. Yes, eat your vegetables. Actually, I did. Did no, you? I didn't. <laughs> Well, um, if parents are get, having a hard time yeah. getting their kids to eat vegetables, is there something you yeah. could suggest to them? Well, and I think the more that we get our kids involved, mm -hmm. get them involved in the kitchen, mm -hmm. um, both of my boys, they would cook with me all the time. I would get them in the kitchen. I even made an apron for one of my guys. Oh, wow. and, and he would help me to be able to make um, whatever the meal was that we were eating. You mm -hmm. know, just give them a little task to do. Even in the grocery store, having involved with that too. Hey, go to the produce section and pick me up some celery. 
Oh, you know, really? and now they got to look around. Where's the celery? And then they'll oh, grab good. it and bring it back. Yeah. Um, have them pick out a new fruit or vegetable, maybe, maybe that they've never had before. Mm -hmm. Or let them, hey, we're having dinner tonight. I want to serve a vegetable with that meal. Why don't you pick out the vegetable for oh, tonight? So let me know what you want to have. Yeah. So get them to participate yeah. in it. That's a good idea. And I mean, really, you know, depending on who you ask, I mean, you may get. A, a whole bunch of different answers about what's healthy versus unhealthy. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, um, you know, cooking methods can be a big part of that, sure. right? I mean, you can take something that starts out healthy, <laughs> like a lean piece of chicken. I'm right. going to use that as an example without the skin, right? right? We know skinless white meat chicken is less uh, calories in the dark meat chicken, which tends to have a little bit more fat. But again, I mean, then you've got to think about all the opportunities that people can have to make it unhealthy or healthy. Right. Okay, so let's just talk about that. Like, yeah. what are some healthy cooking methods that people can use? Yeah, uh, grilling can be good, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, baking can be another, or roasting can be another great way to be able to do it. Um, Pan frying things is mm -hmm. kind of where we're going to the dark side a little bit. Because <laughs> uh, typically, if you're going to do that, you're going to be adding some fat to it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and it has its application. Mm -hmm. um, moderation, I guess, is always a great, a great disclaimer there as well. You yeah. know, we can pan sear or pan fry some things mm -hmm. if we're using just a little bit of oil. We're not talking right. about tablespoons. I mean, and people can take something as healthy as a monounsaturated oil like olive oil, right. which is predominantly the monounsaturated mm -hmm. uh, oil, and just laden everything with that. And again, okay, you're taking something that's really a healthier fat, right? right? And then um, using so much of it right. that you're getting like, by the time you, the more quantity you use, mm -hmm. you're getting a lot more mm -hmm. fat, mm -hmm. calories, right? Right. right? Even like something that we see a lot, people think that coconut uh, oil is like the end all cure all for everything. Right. And I just usually warn people hey, it is still a saturated fat. Saturated fats are the most harmful fats of all. We don't have any research that really supports mm -hmm. including or making recommendations for this type of fat in your diet to help promote optimal health, mm -hmm, do we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes back to almost like we were talking about before, the halo effect. Mm -hmm. Because we know because we know the health benefits associated with olive oil, sometimes it makes us go, well, a little, a little bit, bit more is better. <laughs> a little is good, more sure, is better. Sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But you all that are watching are very smart people mm -hmm. if you've been watching the show. I know that you can use your brain and make good choices. It's always a pleasure to uh, visit with you in the TV room of your house. And thanks for tuning in. Jen, thanks for being a You're part welcome. of the show. Look forward to seeing you next week here on CTN 10.